Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, and in this episode, we're going to um, continue on the transom work. Um, in the last episode, I kind of prepped it for some new plywood that needed to be replaced around the mufflers. Uh, now I'm replacing basically the same size piece of plywood that the factory put in there. There wasn't really anything going on wrong with it there except for the fact that the plywood was never fiberglass and it delaminated. So I'm just replacing that one chunk, trying to do it a little bit neater than they did it. And um, yeah, that's about as far as that goes. Uh, so we'll get the piece of plywood in in this episode, and then I'll start removing some of the steering components uh, down in that same area. So um, hope you enjoy the video, and um, here we go. This all took place actually in uh, June of 2019. So I pretty much have all this area sanded down um, and ready for the new piece of plywood. Now I have to make a template for the piece of plywood. I don't have any cardboard or paperboard or anything here on the boat, so I'm going to use um, just these little pieces of um, thin plywood I use to make templates with. I'll uh, hot glue them together and I'll have a solid um, template. I have a jigsaw over here. I'm just going to cut these with a jigsaw. I could use a blade or something, but I use a jigsaw. I have it. So I made a couple new plywood pieces and today I'm going to do a final fit on them and hopefully um, get them installed with some uh, thickened epoxy. So let me show you the pieces that I made and um, what we're up to today. This is just sitting in here. I got I to gotta trim the top. I cut them a little bit long. Uh, but on the back side, I didn't show this. Did it at home this week. Oops. Did it at home this week. Uh, I basically cut all these reliefs. They're about an inch and a half apart. I think the factory ones are probably two inches apart. But these are an inch and a half apart. And they go in pretty deep. So I wanted this to conform to the um, to the curve on the transom. Uh, so it, it, it'll bend it'll bend pretty easily here and conform pretty nicely. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the transom because it's um, it's just fiberglass. There's no core material, as I mentioned before. So, yeah, I don't want to be pushing out on it and have it deform on the outside. So I wanted something uh, that would um, be easily pressed up against there. Now I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to have to come up with something in this area to spring prop it into place. Uh, so that's probably going to take more time than anything. So to fit this, the first thing I want to do is um, get the top a little nicer and cleaner. I uh, guess I'll bring the camera down here and show you what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, the top is kind of wobbly up here. Um, this is much straighter, actually. Um, so I'm just going to trace. I'm going to use this compass and just set it at a random width and just go along and kind of trace I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here but, uh, just trace the rough shape of it uh, and then that's going to give me a place to cut to get it 
closer than it is now. Uh, so I'm going to go cut that and then uh, see where we're at. I don't want to take off too much at once. You know, once you cut it off, you can't put it back on. So I'll trim that and then we'll come back and see how it fits. So I've trimmed this piece with my jigsaw and uh, you can see the top is fitting pretty good now. Side fits good. That was a flat side. It wasn't too difficult to do. The bottom is just above that um, stringer here. Uh, so that's where I wanted it. I cut the bottom on a 45. It's hard to tell. I used my jigsaw for that and set it at a 45. I cut this side at a 45 too, but I think I want a little more bevel than that. Because the fiberglass, I want to come in here a little nicer. So I think I might cut this down a little more with either my um, sander or I did bring my electric planer today. It probably would work. That's what the factory um, had theirs cut up on this piece. But the fiberglass really doesn't um, touch right here. There's a gap. So they probably should have done a little more angle. So I think I'm going to do, do that next and uh, then refit it. And I'm probably gonna probably gonna cut the hole for the muffler too. Uh, then I can actually use the hole for the muffler as a place to clamp this thing on. So it didn't take much pressure to push this actually into place. This is just a little temporary uh, piece of wood I just stuck in there. But uh, well, well, we'll play around with it and see. They're planing it down now. Here's the fit. It's fitting, it's feeling really good everywhere. Um, I like the transition a lot better for the fiberglass. Um, it's a lot smoother transition down. I might touch it up a little bit here and there with some sandpaper or something, but sanding block. But overall, um, it looks looks really good. It's fitting really nice. So I think what I'm going to do now. You can see how tight it is on this side. Um, I'm going to mark the hole for the muffler on the outside because it's not going to take much to hold this up against that fiberglass. Those, I made those um, relief cuts so deep that this thing really just pushed right up against it. It's not that much of an arc here. Probably was a little overkill on my part, but I'll fill all those with epoxy and it'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so I think if I just cut that hole uh, then I can stick a clamp in there and just use that as my clamping um, surface. So, I'm going to go outside now and um, uh, mark the hole and cut it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll, I'll fix it later. I don't actually want it to be perfect now because if it shifts or something, then I'm screwed. But I can always sand it later on to the actual uh, hole that's in the fiberglass now. Match the muffler exactly with a little trial fit. So. Let's go, uh, let's go do that. So you may or may not have seen the episode where I was putting in the ceiling uh, beam caps. Um, but I created this uh, reverse kind of clamp out of these quick grip bar clamps. Uh, and I showed how I did that. Uh, basically had two of them and I took the handle off one. I flipped the handle around, these handles around. And I uh, just had to pop a pin out over here. Flip the handles around so they go the opposite direction. So they push out instead of in. So that's good enough to get this pushed up against the the uh, transom without too much pressure. And I just stuck a 2x4 in here. It's not even clamped on. It's just being forced against the fuel tank lip and the uh, my little stair I made. So that's how I'm holding it in place. Holding well. I don't know if I could probably can't do that for the uh, final fit up because I only have one of these clamps but I'll have the hole cut and I can uh, I can clamp it through the hole so this is just to mark the uh, hole on the outside for now
go. So I've got this thing clamped up by the hole down here. Uh, that's fine, but what I'm having trouble with, pardon the craziness here, but uh, the top is not pushing in. So I've got my clamp structure here trying to push the top middle part in. But I think because it's not pushing evenly, evenly all along this thing, I think I'm going to take a small piece of uh, one by material and cut the actual curve into it and then use that horizontally to push the whole thing in so I'll get more even pressure all along the whole thing otherwise I have to put I can put multiple pieces across here but I know, I'm gonna experiment a little, a little and uh, see what works well, that didn't actually take as long as I thought. And I came up with an idea as I walked away. Uh, I have this board sitting here. So I've got this piece in, and it's putting pressure on the outsides. And then I just, it's hard to see, but I have a, a shim. And you can see it better. Right from the bottom, you can see it. Um, I just shoved the shim in the middle to take up the slack in the middle. And uh, it seems to be doing the trick. And i got to adjust it and tweak it a little. I'll probably do something other than this here, just to hold it. Oops, there it goes. Um, because of that. So this is what I came up in the end. I have a two by four it's clamped onto my ledger board there, and onto the stair over here. And then I have a series of uh, boards just clamped to the two by four, just pushing against in certain points on the top, three points, and then same on the bottom. I I have the clamp on the hole, and then I have uh, this piece of plywood wedged in over here as like a springboard, and, um, and then one over here just with a little clamp holding it in. It wasn't much pressure I needed over there. So that's it. That's how it's going to be uh, installed. So at this point, I've already wetted everything out back of this, all these grooves because of the paint. side. It's all, all epoxied. All the grooves are filled in as you can see. It's fine all the way down on the bottom here. Uh, here's the opening. Uh, the other thing I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to come back on this area right here. Uh, after I do the other side, I'm going to come back in with um, thickened epoxy in the uh, the premix. I'm using 610, but whatever. It could be Tixo too, whatever you're using. Um, and just fill in that little bit of a space between the three quarter inch and the half inch. Um, they weren't even connected together from the factory. They were just, there was no um, epoxy or, or any kind of resin or anything between those two. But I think I want to connect them together. So I'm going to come back and squeeze that in there with a caulk gun and smooth it out and make it look nice. But anyways, let's go look at the outside. I 
kind of windy out here. The audio is not so great. And I also filled in these from the back side. I'm going to leave them a little shy from the top because I want to uh, grind all this stuff and do something a little nicer than, than that. I'll grind out each hole and fill it from this side as well, I think. Uh, that was where the step was before. So, yeah, looking, looking pretty good. Well, here we are on the next day and um, everything's dried. Uh, I'm going to take off all this, um, all these little support pieces and pieces I put in to put pressure on. Uh, a piece of plywood to hold it up against the uh, fiberglass this morning. And uh, we'll check out the uh, work. There's the starboard side. Here's the uh, port side. Uh, so, yeah, looks pretty good. And we'll uh, take this stuff off and get a little bit better look at it. Well, today I'm going to uh, attempt to probably take this steering off. Um, I'd like to get this whole wooden area off so I can get behind it and underneath it to clean and do whatever. So it all starts with just removing uh, those pieces there and the main rod. And then on the other side, there's a couple more. Um, so I put a little bit of PB Blaster on there to at least loosen up these bolts on the top here. And I can undo those and try to spread the uh, spread the tie rod there, or I guess that's what you call it, I'm not really sure. Um, bell crank, uh, maybe something. I have to figure that out. But anyways, i um, going to try to remove all that today. See how that goes. Well, there we have it. Um, I don't want to jinx myself, so I haven't done the other side, but I didn't film myself taking this off because I thought there might be a few choice words involved. I've seen people trying to take these off in other videos, and uh, they've got torches and everything else out, but basically I just done put some uh, PV blaster on here. This bolt came off pretty good. I loosened it up with my wedge it in here. I didn't really have to do it. Just kind of almost basically slid right down when I working that and there's this little um, key here I had a little trouble with this um, get, get in the view here uh, goes right in the slot here like that but I knocked it out from the top with the, the screwdriver and knocked it all the way down and it fell out uh, and then this thing just twisted off a little I put a little bit of a PB blaster in this hole right here uh, just to loosen it up But it slid right off over the top. So that was pretty good. I uh, take this rod off here. There's the There's the pin that was Down in it and then there was a Cotter pin here on the bottom. So that was easy. I just did that by hand actually I didn't even use a pair of pliers uh, Just pull that out got the rod off and uh, yeah one side down. Still have to take this collar off. And this collar, pretty sure with this little set screw here and nut, holds the whole shaft up. But I'm not really sure. I've never done any of this before. But if I can get this collar off, then I could probably slip the whole board up. Maybe it's um, attached somewhere else where the packing is or something. But anyways, uh, I'm going to work on the other side and get the other one off. There's two on the other side. I'll work on those. Maybe I'll film those. You can see how it goes.
do it, I guess. I'll just leave that keyway right in there. Two down. This was very easy to take off. I just unloosened this nut right here, which is just a set set screw nut. And then I undid this with a Allen, got an Allen uh, head on it, socket. And I pulled this thing all the way off. There you can see got the Allen in there. And then took just a little bit of twisting, but I was able to remove this whole collar. Just like that. It came off just like that. So there's the piece. And uh, I have a clamp on the bottom holding it. I don't know if that's really holding the rudder up or what's going on with it. But uh, that's it. Clean this up a little bit. And uh, do the other side. Hopefully I can slip this slip this whole board and everything right off over the top of that shaft that's the goal anyways but there we go one side done nice heavy duty bronze piece of hardware there the collar and there's a hole actually that it goes into so you can't screw it up Okay, I'll give you an update here. Uh, I ended up putting the collars back on because they were the only thing holding the rudders up. As I walked away, they started slipping down. So I put these on just to hold them in place for now. And I took the stair out, so now the whole thing was exposed. There's the collar over there. And then this was the um, piece that the steering rack attached to right there. And there was these bolts with nuts on the bottom down through this wood. There's one on the other side here. Uh, this will be the uh, starboard side. Uh, that was difficult to get up. I mean, the bolts, the nuts came off easy on the bottom, but it's got these kind of bolts here, carriage bolts. And I just had to keep prying it and banging on it and everything else to get it out of there. I don't even know if I'm going to reuse it, so I'm probably not. But if I make a new one, I'll, I'll make a new one if I use something similar. I gotta find out how the uh, the new rack is gonna attach, and it may have to go in a different place or something. I don't know. But anyways, I had to get it off to get the two separate pieces off because it was interconnecting them. So that was a bear, and it was a few choice words, but not too bad. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Now I'm gonna clean up a little bit and uh, assess if I have enough time today to take this stuff off, or if I'm just gonna. Uh, call it quits. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and um, of course, in the next video, we're just going to keep continuing on with the same project. As a matter of fact, this video was supposed to be, this one and the next one were supposed to be all one video, but um, it was getting way too long, and I just had to cut it off somewhere, so uh, that's what happened with that. So, anyways, um, I hope everyone has a good one, and um, we'll see you really soon, right here on Renovation Sport.